Well, this video is about a Canyon endurance bike that was delivered to a customer, and then the customer took it to Mapdex Cycles that did an inspection on it to make sure everything was as it should be. Now, unfortunately, there was a number of points which were found to not be really compliant with a bike of this stature coming out of a top end brand. So what happened was, is then the customer contacted Canyon and the bike was sent away and these things were repaired. So let's roll the intro and let's go through what these things were and let's have a bit of a look at the other side of the coin. Even though there was a good outcome in the end, really should the person have had to go through all of those issues to get a product or get some refund for the bike that he'd purchased in the first place. Now, first off, I just want to go through the issues that MapDeck identified. Now, the first one is the axle didn't thread into the frame properly. Now, this was caused by there's a thread in the frame and there's a thread in the hanger, and the thread has to go through both of those two pieces to fully seat and remove any slop that's in the wheel. Now, the wheel had slop on the first inspection, and the reason why is because the threads weren't aligned and it had slightly damaged the thread, so it hit the hanger and it stopped, and what that meant is, is the axle wasn't, wasn't reaching its seat and going all the way in. The second problem was there needed to be some spaces fitted to the rear brake caliper, and of course it didn't seat off, so there were some problems adjusting the brake, and also the next point was is there was some paint overspray which was not allowing the caliper to seat properly. Now that was the the third one and the fourth one was crank had not been pre-tensioned properly so there was slack in the crank and you just couldn't adjust the change of the gears. It would play up and it would drop off the chain and you just couldn't get it to work properly because the chain ring and the axle weren't set up properly and the pre-tension wasn't done in the crank set for the bearing so there was some slop and some slack in there. Five, which I think is really bad, is there was air in the brakes. You could pull a handle of the, the disc brakes all the way back and there was no engagement. There was no feel to that. So basically, if the person had just pulled it out of the box, jumped on the bike right down the road, they could have like hit a curb or gone for a stop sign or something because they wouldn't have been able to stop the bike because there was no brake. The brakes were basically not working. Six, Brake lines were rattling. Now you might say this is a small thing, but uh, it is something that's annoying when you're buying a top end bike, which is their top endurance bike offered by Canyon. Okay, so what happened is after this, the bike was then sent back to Canyon and the end story is that the whole bike was fixed. And what I'll do is I'll put a link up to the video that MapTech did and the the fixes on the bike were really done in an excellent manner. So the outcome at the end was very, very good. And also Canyon offered a number of points that they did for the customer. First of all, they offered a Goodwill 550 pounds. So that's around about $1,000 Aussie. They also fitted a narrow handlebars. I imagine it was 42 or 44, and then they put a 40 on. And that handlebar is worth £271, which is about $500 Aussie. And then they also threw in a new chain and cassette, which was 11.34, and that was £270 for the cassette, which is about 500 again Aussie, and £49 for a new chain, which is around about just under $100 Aussie, which is about the same as a Camp Ignolio chain. So that would that would duress products. So in the end, the customer got a pretty good outcome, even though this did take some time before the bike was fully finished. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is buying bikes online. And I must admit, this is one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of online sales, because he received this bike 
And then he had to go through the process of having it inspected to make sure that it's okay. And that would have been at some cost. Now, in Australia, a bike shop would probably charge between $150 to $200 to do that inspection, to go through everything and check it. So that's a cost you would have had to pay on top. Then you have to send it back to Canyon if there's something wrong with it and get it fixed within that 30 days. And as MapDeck said, it's best to do this before you've even turned the wheels on any tarmac at all, because then no one can say, hey, look, that was user, damage user, operator error, whatever. It's looked at immediately by the bike shop. They basically pull it out of the box, go let, give it a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a few things wrong of it. Send it back. And then the company is obliged to meet their money, 30 day money back guarantee or fix everything that's on the bike, which happened in this case. Now, there's a number of points that I really want to highlight here. Now, the first thing is that, yes, there was about a $1,000 refund or, or gift by Canyon for the inconvenience, which, hey, yeah, look, you know, that covers any loss of time or maybe you needed that bike. You might have needed that bike for a, a race or a special event that you were going into. You might have had it going on an aeroplane. You might have been flying some distance. It could have had a massive impact to you going on holidays or going somewhere else to going some competition with that bike, which could not have been, that time could not have been back. Maybe it didn't happen in this case, but it's it's possible. Now, the second thing that I think was is really inexcusable is that brakes were just not working out of the box. These are supposed to be pre-assembled bikes ready to go, apart from just doing a few minor adders, like probably even just putting the wheels on and so forth and pumping up the tires when you're ready to go. Now, that actually really is a huge safety issue. And the third issue that I really think is inappropriate is that even though they changed the handlebars and those handlebars cost about 270 pounds, I think at this level, the, the price of these bikes and the way that they're designing these integrated handlebars, it should be included that these handlebars are interchangeable. You should be able to order the bike with the handlebar you want, not that this size frame has a standard handlebar whip. So the smaller the frame, the smaller the handlebars, the bigger the frame, the bigger the handlebars, because they're limiting your ability to fit the bike. And I think this is really, really poor because it's coming directly from the factory. It's not been sent to a shop and been built up. It's coming direct from the factory. Why can't they fit that out? Why can't they put the handlebar on your order for that price? Because we're not talking about 500 pound bike. We're talking probably about a 5,000 pound to 10,000 pound bike. And they're the ones that are pushing these integrated handlebar systems where it limits the amount of adjustability after the fact of purchase. So I think that that's, that is not really a extra thing that they added. Even though they changed it, that should be normal when you're buying a bike. Now, in conclusion, I'd just like to thank MapDeck Cycle Works of putting up this video, putting up the video where they showed the faults and then putting up the video where they showed that things were fixed by Canyon and not only fixed, but were done in a very professional way. So what that means is, is that provides a lot of goodwill for the company. The fact is that like that 30 day, it's showing that that 30 day return policy that Canyon have is being basically stood by by the company, which is really, really good. But on the flip side, we're having, a, we're seeing a lot of problems with these frames. And to me, paint overspray or the mechanics having to face them when they're coming out of the box, which is a really common thing. I've spoken to a few mechanics. Facing surfaces and removing paint overspray is a pretty common thing with these frames and it shouldn't have to be done. These bikes should be ready to go. They should all be done when before they leave the factory because let's be real, The even though the calipers and the brakes might be made by a different company, it's up to that person who's assembling it and putting it in the box to make sure that the whole bike works as advertised. Not that, hey, look, we get to the end and the bike's not adjusted and then the me some mechanic has to take them off and go, oh, there's some paint overspray or there's a dribble of paint or, <coughs> excuse me, all the services haven't been faced and this needs to be done after the fact. If they want to put disc brakes on bikes, they need to make them work properly. Not, hey, we just got a frame 
and we've just sprayed it and straight out the paint shop just put it together and we're not even going to ensure that all the bearing seats and all of the the brake caliper seats are all faced so we have a proper finished product okay guys we'll leave your comments down below there's two sides we can fall on this we can say hey look canyon did a really good job in the remedial work and then we have the other one who say hey that's great but on the other case then should bikes like this be leaving the factory and this is not a one-off this is this is across all brands i'm not just saying canyon it's across all bands bikes really don't come out of the factories when they're packed up in a very finished type of way they're they're just thrown together well i would say thrown together not thrown together but there is probably a little bit of remedial work that's normally required right in assembly that they're not doing okay guys that's where i'm going to leave it and i'm going to see you next vid <laughs>